Hello, I'm Aoife Otobaya and today I will be presenting my Maths Inquiry lesson process to you. Information about my Maths Inquiry project. In the following Maths Inquiry project, students are presented with a relevant opportunity to construct and develop an array of strategies to count large quantities of objects. In this inquiry project, students work through the four phases of the 4D guided inquiry model, which aims to develop content knowledge amongst students as well as assisting them in understanding the importance of both inquiry and providing mathematical evidence. Today I will be focusing on the Discover lesson of this inquiry project which has students discover that using a scoop of Lego to build a house is a very broad unit of measurement and work on identifying numbers on number lines. This lesson is targeted towards Year 1 students as they are beginning to learn how to count to 100. This of course aligns with content descriptors and achievement standards from the Australian curriculum. Learning Goals the content descriptors chosen for the following inquiry project are as follows. However, for the first lesson, I will predominantly be looking at recognize, model, read, write, and order numbers to at least 100, locate these numbers on a number line. Students' learning goals will be clearly articulated to them utilizing a learning intention at the start of the lesson, i.e. today I'm learning how to locate numbers on a number line. This intention directly relates to content descriptors and achievement standards from the Australian curriculum for a year one student. Students will also develop skills in three proficiency strands from the Australian curriculum. These include problem solving, fluency, and reasoning. Phase one, 10 minutes. During this phase, I, I will be hooking students with a book titled, If I Built a House by Chris Van Dusen. Utilizing a hook to start a lesson, grab students' attention, injecting excitement amongst them in their new learning journey, fostering a classroom full of positive and eager students. Upon reading the book, I would have students discuss with their elbow body things they might include in their dream house. From there, I would bring all the students back together and have a whole class discussion about things they would include in their house, as well as asking higher cognitive questions, such as, why would you include that in your house? And what purpose does that have in your house? All the students' ideas will be written on the board so that they are able to refer to it throughout the inquiry process. Upon having a whole class discussion, students will chorally read the learning intention for the day's lesson, i.e., today I'm learning how to locate numbers on a number line. Phase two, 15 minutes. During this phase, I will introduce the problem to students by showing them a pre-built Lego house. I will then ask students how many blocks they think I used if I only used one scoop of Lego. This is the guiding inquiry question for the project and it will constantly be referred to throughout the 4D process. Sharing this question with students fosters curiosity amongst them, helping them to engage and attain deeper understanding of content. I will allow time for students to discuss their ideas with their elbow bodies as it allows students to process information more meaningfully. Upon discussions with their elbow bodies, I will have students sit back at their desks. I will go through the gradual release of responsibility model with students to ensure they are all capable of placing numbers correctly on a number line. I will start by explicitly showing students how to locate a number on a number line, then we will do it together as a class, and then students will do it with their elbow body. Students will then decide their guess on how many Lego blocks they think I used to build a Lego house. Phase 3, 25 minutes. Students will have just gone through the first three stages of the GRR model, so during this phase, students will begin to apply their understanding independently. With their guests from the previous phase, students will go to the hall where a large number line mat will be placed, and they will be tasked with standing on their guests. Here, some higher cognitive questions can be asked, such as, why do you think there is that many blocks? Why do you think that number belongs there? And what happens if you added or took away one from your number? Would your position move on the number line? I will then have students remove themselves from the number line and give them each a different number to find, asking them those same higher cognitive questions. This hands-on experience allows students to attain a better understanding, retention, and memory of concepts. Once the activity is completed, students will come back to the classroom and place their guess on a smaller class number line. Here I will have students observe the class number line, looking at the range of guesses. This is an example of what the whole class number line might look like after all the students' predictions have been made. The circles indicate a student guess. As you can see, there is a wide range of guesses. This clearly shows to students that a scoop of Lego is too broad of a measurement. Closure, 10 minutes. As a closure for this first Discover lesson, students will discuss as a class how a scoop is an informal form of measurement as students observe the large range of guesses made. This discussion prepares them for the next lesson as they begin to devise an array of strategies to utilize when scooping the Lego and beginning to collect evidence. As an exit, slip from this lesson, students will complete a fill-in-the-blank number line. This allows me the opportunity to ensure all students are understanding concepts. As a class, we will revisit the learning intention and together we will discuss whether we were successful. Expected student outcomes. I expect students to respond very well to this first lesson as I made it highly engaging with the hook to start the lesson and the range of hands-on collaborative activities. 
I expect by the end of this lesson that students are beginning to become more confident in identifying a range of numbers on number lines as they move on to counting to 100 during the next lesson. However, this skill will continually be scaffolded throughout this inquiry process. If I find students struggle to complete the exit slip, then changes can be made to ensure all students are able to attain a concrete understanding. Moreover, I expect students to begin to understand how a scoop of Lego is a broad unit of measurement upon observing their peers' guesses on the class number line. This understanding will assist them in moving forward in the inquiry process.